Today's waifu is Resident Evil badass, Jill Valentine, a former member of STARS. Her early years were spent in the US Army where she showed tremendous skills in bomb disposal, lockpicking, plus tremendous courage under dire circumstances. Now she's currently an agent for the BSAA. This is my first time delving into a non-anime style character but I can't leave her out of the equation considering she is my partner after all. I'd rather have no one else by my side during a zombie invasion. So here are my 10 reasons why Jill Valentine is waifu material. Starting off, she's an S-rank survivor. Jill has been through a lot, and I mean a lot, including but not limited to giant snakes, getting poisoned, zombie dogs, explosions, whoops wrong clip, more explosions, being chased by a maniac, fighting Wesker, being chased by this thing, driving off a rooftop, driving off a cliff, and of course facing a ton of zombies. So much so that she started to develop PTSD from them. In the recently released RE3 remake, just the opening alone made me question how much more could this person take. As Nemesis bursts into the room, kicks Jill against the wall, and lays the smackdown on her candy ass. You mean the alley that's on fire? Maybe. Surely a tall drink of water like yourself can put out a few flames. It's easy to admit that Jill is an attractive character. It's not like we had anyone else to choose from back then. Often portrayed as a fair-skinned brunette with beautiful blue eyes. Most of the time. Her lovely hair is either short just before her shoulders or when grown longer is tied up in a functional ponytail. The director Shinji Mikami designed Jill's character with an independent look in mind. His purpose was to avoid objectification of women. This was going against the norm back then where female characters were often portrayed as submissive. Oh yeah, spray it everywhere Jill. <laughs> Did you see that, Shinji? The Resident Evil series is known for their interesting puzzles that usually involve various gems, keys, and whatnot. Pretty much everything before RE5 required a solid amount of brain power. Otherwise, everything else is solved with your fists. Given that Jill is the main character in Resident Evil 1 and 3, Jill clearly has an investigative mind that allows her to solve through all the puzzles rather quick, depending on who's holding the controller of course. That's some of you don't remember this, but Jill is actually a pretty good piano player. In the first Resident Evil, as part of the puzzle, she found a piece of sheet music and had to play on the piano to progress. The music just so happens to be Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. Not the most difficult piece, but it does take some skill to play with real emotion. Just listen for yourself. We see this same puzzle in RE5's Lost in Nightmares DLC, providing us with a revisit of the Spencer estate where Chris and Jill were chasing after Wesker. During one of the puzzle sequences, only Jill could play the piano piece, recalling it after so many years. So if you're looking for some music, she's got you covered. Moonlight Sonata. I remember the last time I played this. Everybody could always use a little more luck in their lives. Despite Jill encountering harsh situations, we all have to admit that she has tremendous luck for all these life-saving moments to occur. One that comes to mind is this. Wesker! Barry! Help! Stand back! Grab my hand! <sighs> Barry! That was a close one. A second late, you would have fit nicely into a sandwich. You probably remember it this way. That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. We all have to admit that Jill is one lucky son of a gun. That's quite a coincidence for Barry to be snooping around that specific corridor when he should have been somewhere else in the first place. In RE3, Carlos was lucky to save her twice from life-threatening situations. Hey, answer me. You hang in there, super cop. I got you. Jill has also been able to dodge every fatal piece of flying shrapnel, including an almost direct hit from a rocket. Some people also like to call this plot armor. Lost your touch. Jill is just amazing with her hands when using lockpicks. No lock is safe from Jill once she gets her hands on a lockpick set. This tedious skill is known for testing the patience of many, even in some video games, but not Jill. So if you're ever locked out of your house or need to break into a local donut shop at 3 in the morning, Jill's got your back. These donuts are great! Jelly filled are my favorite! Nothing beats a jelly filled donut! Her proficiency has given her quite a reputation. When Barry found a lockpick, he gave it to Jill along with this ultimate title. Here's a lockpick. It might be handy if you, the master of unlocking, take it with you. 
just known for having interesting fashion sense. Her uniform is quite unique and was probably designed to help her stand out. For one, she's the only member wearing a cute beret and huge shoulder pads without any chest armor. She probably wears the shoulder pads to help her carry the team, probably one of the most iconic outfits in video games. Next to Wesker's sunglasses at night, nothing can beat that. Jill seems to be fond of the color blue, considering all her other costumes come in a similar shade. In the original RE3, despite getting caught in a zombie apocalypse, Jill still looks fashionable as ever, wearing an iconic blue tube top, black skirt, knee-high brown boots, and a white jacket tied around her waist. She somehow makes it functional. Try jumping off an exploding window while wearing that. Jill is a certified badass. Number 3. She's nimble. I know, I know. Jill used to move just like a tank where you can only rotate or move forward and back. But over time, and with the use of technology, Jill was the first character to receive a dodge move in the franchise. Designed to help you escape from the immortal nemesis, it's even more fleshed out in the remake. This move, when perfectly timed, can dodge almost anything, and even triggers a Matrix-like moment. When men like Richard aren't sacrificing themselves to save Jill, she tends to hold other people's lives above hers. In the RE3 opening when Brad got bit, she of all people should know what happens afterwards. Brad had to shove her away from the dire situation just to get her to leave without it. Poor Brad. When Nemesis was after her and the UBCS team, knowing she was the prime target, she purposely led Nemesis away on a wild goose chase in order to protect the others. You want stars? I'll give you stars! And now at number 1, Badass. Like many Resident Evil protagonists, Jill can take care of herself, unlike some people. Yeah, I know how to take care of myself. She's the only character that has had to face the likes of Nemesis, all by herself, mind you. Personally, I would be terrified of a 10-foot bazooka-wielding monster capable of super speed and tentacles that can catch missiles? Call it courage or simply just being pissed off when Jill is able to stand up to zombies and nemesis spouting all sorts of one-liners. For such a small frame, she actually has a lot of strength to be able to lift and fire a railgun. Just look at the cracks in the ground. Surely Jill had to feel some of that. Is she some kind of Terminator? If Jill's a worthy waifu, leave a comment on what was your favorite reason about Jill. And if I miss anything, what do you think should be number 11?